The National Climate Resilience and Energy Transition Plan Dialogue closed with a vision that echoed through the hearts of all who gathered. The role of the private sector, indigenous wisdom, and the promise of resilience took center stage. Vice President Dr. Mohamed Juldajalo maintained that lack of energy limits the country's capability to transform productive sectors that hold the potential for job creation, increased revenue, and responsible to stimulate economic growth. He noted that development infrastructure is the enabling agenda to propel the growing sectors. I am confident that investment in the energy sector is no doubt critical in that endeavor. Equally, today we have global obligations and responsibilities of not only replicating the energy development strategies that are heavily carbon-based, but to think creatively about an energy transition plan with climate resiliency at the center, while we admit that this is indeed very, very urgent, we are, however, moderated by the quality of a shared future we want to leave behind. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, furthermore, we also care about sustainable climate resilient investment in the energy sector because it is critical to leverage on tax resources in climate finance, which most countries, particularly countries like Sierra Leone, we do need today. Acknowledgement of development partners is also seen as crucial in the journey to combat climate change, providing clean energy and improving food security systems. Chairman Presidential Initiative on Climate Change, Renewable Energy and Food Security, Honorable Dr. Kandekole Yumkela, highlighted some of the priority areas discussed during the two-day dialogue. We've looked at food systems, a lot of discussion on energy for productive uses, and we've looked at that as well. So, um, coordination. The concern for everybody is, and the journalists raised it late this afternoon, they say, well, we talk and then there will be no implementation. So we've assured them that there will be implementation in the very last session before UK. We were looking at coordination mechanisms. You know, how do we keep the momentum? How do we keep the dialogue coherent? That it's not just Ministry of Energy. It's Ministry of Energy, Ministry of Agriculture, Finance, and others. And within the context also of feed salary. So we've looked at what was done in Nigeria, what is done in Kenya, and so on, how they've set up uh, mechanisms to continue the dialogue, but also to ensure delivery. Indigenous knowledge and practices are regarded as key components in building climate resilience and sustainable food systems. Salifu Chernakamara, AYV News.